Christmas vacation? Rosa Parks and the Boston Bruins are all on this day. Hey, welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is December 1st, 2020, 336 day of the year. We got 30 days left in 2020. And like I've said many times before, I can't wait till this year's over. Today is the 48th Tuesday of the 49th week and the 71st day of fall. We only got 20 days left until winter. So it's Atlantis on about the 20th, 21st of uh, December. That could be good. If today's your birthday, your birthstone is either a blue topaz or a turquoise. Today is Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday aims to celebrate and promote charity and generosity. After two of the largest shopping days, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday aims to provide people with a day of giving back to the world. Giving back can be through donations, volunteering time, or any other form of charitable action. This has been going on since uh, 2012. All right, let's see what else December 1st has given us. 1824, the United States presidential election. Since no candidate received a majority of the total electoral college votes in the election, the United States House of Representatives is given the task of deciding the winner in accordance with the 12th Amendment to the United States Constitution. In the election for the vice president, at the time, the president just didn't select his own vice president. There was actually an election for that. Anyway, moving on. In the election for vice president, John C. Calhoun was elected with a comfortable majority of the vote. During the continuous an election in the House, each state's delegation casts one vote per state, meaning you could have 50 reps, but they all had to agree on one person and give one vote is what the deal was. The senators, on the other hand, they got to cast their votes individually for the vice president. As a result of this election, John Quincy Adams was elected president of the United States. 100 years later, in 1924, the National Hockey League's first United States-based franchise, the Boston Bruins, they played their first game in league play at home in the still-existent Boston Arena indoor hockey facility. It is both the oldest arena still in use for ice hockey and the oldest multi-purpose athletic building in the world. It's now known as Matthews Arena, though. 1955, the American Civil Rights Movement in Montgomery, Alabama, seamstress Rosa Parks refuses to give up her bus seat to a white man and is arrested for violating the city's racial segregation laws, an incident which leads to the city's bus boycott. A year later, the United States Supreme Court put down a decision that the whole Alabama and Montgomery law of segregated buses was unconstitutional. 1959, during the Cold War, opening date for signatures of the Antarctic treaty which sets aside antarctica as a scientific preserve and bans military activity on the continent antarctica is the earth's only continent without a native human population this treaty was actually the first arms control agreement established during the cold war 1969 during the vietnam war the first draft lottery in the united states is held since world war ii president lyndon b johnson increases the number of u.s personnel in south vietnam due to the political instability in the country by the end of 1965 president johnson had sent 82,000 troops to vietnam and his military advisors wanted another 175 due to the heavy demand for military personnel the u.s increased the number of men the draft provided each month now if you don't know anything about the draft they had to give us a little class on it when I was in the military. And they finally came to the realization that it's a failure. Guys that don't want to join, that are forced to join a military, make up a very bad military. I mean, they should have learned this years ago. The Romans used to force people they took over, used to force their young men to fight for Rome. Rome would take over a place like, I don't know, Spain. And then they would take the villagers and force them to join the Roman military. I mean, it's been going on since God knows when, and they never figured out until Vietnam that it's a really bad plan. 1997, the Heath High School shooting in Kentucky. A 14-year-old coward opened fire on a group of praying students, killing three and injuring five more. The coward wrapped a shotgun and a rifle in a blanket and took them to school, passing them off as an art project he was working on. According to reports, the coward had been bullied by other students and suffered from anxiety, depression, and severe paranoia. He would later be diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. You know, the reason I call these guys cowards is because that's what they are. And I'm sorry he had some mental issues, but he shouldn't have got a hold of firearms. That's my opinion. You know, this didn't just come out of the blue that one day he woke up while his parents were at work and decided he had paranoid schizophrenia. This was something that was building. I hate seeing those, and I can't stand that we have to deal with them all the time. Sorry, I'm off my soapbox now. 2019, the first known case of COVID-19 appears. A study of the first 41 cases confirmed COVID-19. This was published in January of 2020 and determined the first cases appeared on December 1st, 
2019. However, official publications from the World Health Organization reported that the earliest onset of symptoms as 8 December 2019. According to Chinese sources, these were mostly linked to a seafood wholesale market in China. According to an unpublicized report from the Chinese government, the first cases can be traced back to 17 November 2019. Movies released on December 1st, 1989. One of my favorite comedies of all time, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, and a whole bunch of other people. Great movies. I loved all of them. European Vacation sucked, but my two favorites were probably Christmas Vacation followed by Vegas Vacation. Your European Vacation was just horrible. Never watched that one. Born on December 1st, 1935, Woody Allen, American actor, director, screenwriter, and professional dirty old man, married his adopted daughter. Yeah, that's not weird at all, Woody. 1970, Sarah Silverman. I love Sarah Silverman. She's so funny. 1985, Philip DeFranco. Probably one of my top 10 favorite YouTubers. He's got a neat show where every single day, well, five days a week, he does kind of like a quick news show, like a 10, 15 minute news show on things going on in the world. Mostly he focuses on what's going on in the world of the internet. You know, everything from internet celebrities doing stupid stuff to, you know, laws that could affect people like myself, YouTube creators, and just could affect the internet in general. It's a really, really nice show to watch. I watch it every single day it's on. 1987, Vance Joy, Australian singer-songwriter. He signed a five-album deal with Atlantic Records in 2013. Died on December 1st, 1975, Ernesto Maserati, Italian race car driver and engineer. 2013, we lost Edward Heffron, better known as Babe Heffron. He was an American soldier. If you've ever read the book Band of Brothers, or if you've seen the HBO miniseries called Band of Brothers, he was a big part of that. He was uh, one of the soldiers. World War II jumped in on D-Day, and the book and the movie or miniseries follows them through their time in the war. Uh, very, very interesting group of men, to say the least. All right, that is our video today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Happy December, everyone. Go out, be successful today. Be nice to each other.